So Ruby started up as a one-person Hobbit project and end ended up as the most popular activity in Yildal's digital learning platform, School Studio. And right now we have over 600,000 started levels. In this picture, you can see me and Vilde. She is the product manager of Ruby, and we are at NDC last year. The opportunity. In 2020, there was a subject renewal in Norway, where uh, programming was going into the curriculum already from the second grade. So teachers with no programming experience at all uh, had to teach children to enjoy programming. And being a fellow programmer, I thought that I wanted to contribute and create something um, exciting for both the students and the teacher. So I dived into the curriculum and focused on grade two to five, where uh, the curriculum states that um, the students should be able to follow rules and step-by-step -step instructions. They should be able to create algorithms um, related to the coordinate system using variables, conditions, and loops. So after some research, an idea started to take form in my head, and I wanted to create this uh, 2D a game where you program robots in a coordinate system using variables, conditions, and loops. But I did not have time to do it at work because of the subject renewal. So it uh, turned out to um, be my spare time hobby project when I used my kids as testers and paid them in Minecraft coins. <laughs> so sustainability was also a very big part of the curriculum. So I wanted to make an environmental theme. So I wanted this fantastic world when you uh, travel from planet to planet and cleansing them for garbage. I also wanted the game to be very uh, friendly and non-intimidating so that uh, people could be able to explore programming without being afraid of failing. So there, was there, uh, there should be an infinite number of tries, and no time limit, you never die or miss. If you do something wrong, you just don't reach the goal. Uh, I also wanted the game to feel like a real game, and not just some exercises with a little dash of uh, gamification on the top. So with the help from my coworker, I added some game elements to it. Uh, I wanted visual appealing uh, uh, graphics and this and we added like small animations that made the game come a little bit more alive and um, um, to give it a little bit more depth uh, um, I made this isometric view this fake 3d ish effect um, and of course added pickups everyone loves picking up pickups and there should be rewards. So after each planet, uh, you got some kind of reward, either a music uh, or uh, some um, interactive activity. And there should be background, background music and sound. So here I have a short demo of how the game turned out. And in the background, you can hear my kids singing for Minecraft coins. Ruby är en liten maskin som kan rädda framtiden din. Den bryter på köpel och räddar vann. Ruby hjälper till där den kan. So, the gameplay is you uh, program your little robots on the board. Uh, you need to pick up all the trash before reaching the trash can. I also added uh, a limited set of uh, memory slots to force the students to use uh, instructions like uh, loops and conditions. To add variables to the game, I created these cute little monsters and they can only remember one thing at a time. And in Ruby, they can remember uh, the pattern of a tile or a number. To support loops, I added for loops, and the visual representation of for loops in Ruby is a conveyor belt with instructions on it. And for each round the instruction takes, it gets executed. 
and there is also a variable counting down. And when it reaches zero, it stops the loop. For conditions, I implemented while loops, and they are considered as uh, these small uh, little doors inside Ruby's head that can either be open, true, or closed, false. And if they are open, you get access to the conveyor belts on the inside, like a loop. The tech stack I have used is uh, TypeScript, Re React, Redux, and CSS transitions. Uh, some CSS, um, to get this isometric 3D-ish uh, view, I use the skew function of uh, CSS uh, with a little bit of rotating and scaling the y-axis down. And by doing it this way, I can still think in 2D and do all my calculations in 2D, and uh, it would still be isometric. And I use transitions to move Ruby from one tile to another. Uh, some uh, a graphical structure overview. I uh, uh, divided my view into two areas. It's the code area and the game area. And in the game area, I have three layers on top of each other, positioned absolute. So the bottom tiles, the bottom are the tiles with obstacles, shadows, and Roby on top. And in the code area, I have this active code. That is the code that is run by Ruby. And then I have um, available instructions. That is the, the instructions that the student can use to program Ruby. And the active code is also uh, some layers on top of each other. It's uh, the loop layer, condition layer, and instruction layer. To move Ruby from one tile to another, I use this set timeout uh, function that um, as long as the game is not finished, it uh, continuously creates ticks. And for each tick, the reducer listens to it, and then it calculates the next position. It checks if Ruby is colliding with something. It checks if the game has finished, and it checks if Ruby is picking up something. And also, if it is a loop or condition, it checks should it run, and in the loop, of course, it needs to decrease the number. Accessibility is a very important part of uh, the EdTech field because our solutions must be uh, usable by everyone. So uh, to make uh, Ruby good use for, for instance, blind people that need to use a screen reader, I did some adjustments, uh, but it turned out to be a very bad user experience for um, by using uh, Ruby with a screen reader. And Ruby is uh, designed with this, you have this visual layer above the code to make it easier for people who see. But for the, those who can't, I uh, went a step back and just removed that layer so they uh, could just write the code directly into Ruby. And I was uh, considering um, using an existing programming language, but it turned out that the most important part was to make it very easy to use. So that's why I invented my own programming language called RubyScript. And there I focused on uh, giving uh, good parse errors and feedback so that the user would have an easy time figuring out what it did wrong. Uh, since Ruby is a very uh, component-based architecture, it was very easy to just uh, switch one uh, visual uh, component with another one. So uh, the student can freely switch between text mode and visual mode. And to make the text mode a little bit cooler, I added this uh, old MS-DOS graphics to it. And the outcome. So uh, after some uh, quality assurance by the math team, it was added to School Studio. And it turned out to be the most popular activity, both among uh, students and teachers. Uh, and I wrote an article for Code24.no. And um, I got a huge response from that article. And there were so many programming reaching out to me. Um, and based on that, 
we also made our NDC stand that year about Ruby. Ruby showcased it. And that was also uh, a very good success. We got great feedback. And then the same year, I actually won the female developer of the year for creating Ruby. It was issued by Finn.no. And uh, Ruby's product manager, she went f uh, from being a tester to being a developer. So she was the first person who um, uh, started her developer career with Ruby. And right now, I'm having a lightning talk. So thank you all for listening. <laughs>